Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about more unusual details and things that you may have not known about neutron stars. We're going to talk about pulsars, neutron stars, magnetars and we're going to talk about these unusual strange objects out there that fascinate us and we still know nothing about them. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. So neutron stars are definitely not something that you think about every day, but they are very, very, very unusual. One of the things that you see right now is a neutron star that is spinning ridiculously fast. And this is actually one of the more um, unusual facts about them. They are pretty big, not super big, but they are pretty big, but they spin so fast that standing on the surface of a neutron star would mean that you might be actually spinning at like a quarter of the speed of light. Yet you would not actually fly away from the surface because on top of having an extremely fast spin, most neutron stars, or I guess all neutron stars by definition, are extremely dense and have a ridiculously strong gravitational field. The gravity here is billions and billions of times stronger than it is on the surface of planet Earth. The other thing about them, and we can actually try to land here, although I may have to slow down time dramatically for us to actually not uh, feel too dizzy. The other thing about them is that they're technically not really stars. Okay, yeah, they do uh, produce some kind of heat and radiation and they do seem to be very warm and hot and unusually uh, star-like in their appearance and they of course have uh, relativistic effects where they actually bend light that comes close to them but they are in terms of structure and uh, in terms of actual physical properties more planet-like as a matter of fact a better word for them would be neutron planets because their surface is actually crust-like. When, when they get uh, cool enough, less than about a million degrees, they actually are hard on the surface. Yeah, it's super hot still, but they are um, very planet-like. And they do experience things like um, earthquakes, although in, in this case it's more of a star quake, or I guess neutron star quake. And they also experience other things like volcanic eruptions. So, in that sense, this is actually a very unusual object comparable to nothing else in the universe. Now, as the name suggests, they're made almost entirely out of neutrons, but on the surface of uh, neutron stars, we have other uh, molecules as well. We don't really know exactly what and how they are, but we know that there is iron and we know that there is other metals here just kind of deposited on the surface of this object. And the inside is more or less all neutrons. As a matter of fact, it's a type of material that we sometimes refer to as neutronium. Although a lot of scientists don't seem to like this term. Now there's quite a lot of various neutron stars in Space Engine and I guess other space simulations as well. But this one right here is actually the first confirmed and discovered neutron star that we found back in, um, I believe it was actually the 50s. This is um, the neutron star also known as Crab Pulsar. And as you can see in Space Engine, it also has a very, very beautiful accretion disk around it. Uh, now, the, this neutron star was actually originally observed back in um, 1000 AD by the Chinese astronomers, but they didn't really know what they were looking at, they just saw the supernova. And following the supernova, or I guess the explosion of a very large star, what was left, of course, was this neutron star. This was basically the leftover material that is now kind of pulsating and producing all kinds of radiation that reaches our planet um, Earth. And so this is actually not in real time. This is what it looks like in real time. It spins really, really, really fast. And some neutron stars, also known as pulsars, which is pretty much the same thing, uh, spin so fast that uh, they produce something like thousand pulses per second. So basically a single point on the surface will spin thousand times per second, which is ridiculously fast. It's almost the limit of their spin. 
Yet other neutron stars are actually super highly magnetic. They're all technically magnetic, but some of them are so magnetic that they create the most powerful magnets in the universe. And so we usually refer to those neutron stars as magnetars. They're so magnetically charged, as a matter of fact, that they would probably destroy Earth if it ever came remotely close to our planet. So they're super, super powerful. And one scary thing about these objects is that if you ever came close to one, or I guess if you actually start falling into one, uh, because of the gravitational strength, your fall velocity by the time you reach the neutron star would be close to about a third of the speed of light. So by the time you smack into it, you would probably be destroyed in a nuclear reaction so powerful that nothing would be left of you. As a matter of fact, even your atoms would fall apart. So there's almost no practical way of kind of landing here, even though they are sort of planet-like in structure and formation, and even though they might actually have hard surface on them. And what, what's really interesting is that a lot of scientists even speculated about all sorts of planetary conditions on these objects, including, of course, life. There's even a very famous sci-fi book uh, known as Dragon's Egg that talks about life that formed on a neutron star and that the humans communicated with. It's a really cool book. You should definitely check it out. And here's actually the cover of this book if you ever want to try to find it. So this is the book about uh, neutron stars and life on them. A pretty awesome read if you ask me. And because they're so planet-like, they um, have other planetary effects, like for example atmosphere. But the thing about atmosphere on a neutron star is that it's actually very, 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 very thin. As a matter of fact, it's less than a foot or less than 30 centimeters in height. Uh, and there are mountains there too, and they're also very tiny, only a few centimeters or a few inches above the ground. So in that sense, neutron stars are actually unusually planet-like. And so technically, these can be either classified as star uh, remnants, or the most dense and also the smallest stars out there, or you could technically classify them as the densest planetary objects without the actual star. Uh, so we still don't really exactly know how to really put them into this whole star-planet equation. Uh, what we do know, however, is that there's about 2,000 of them we've discovered so far in our galaxy, and we think there's uh, approximately 100 million of them in total. There's, there's quite a lot of these things out there. And, but the closest one to us is at a distance of about 500 light years away, so not particularly close. And so don't expect to actually be able to see them with a telescope or anything like that, because they are very, very far and they're very difficult to see, especially because they don't really emit visual light as much as they do X-rays and gamma rays. And a typical neutron star, so for example, Crab Pulsar, um, is about one to two masses of the sun. As a matter of fact, the biggest neutron star we've ever seen is only about 2.01 masses of the sun, so they're not really that massive. And the stars they were created from were probably about 5 to maybe 10 to maximum 15 masses of the sun. So they, they come from like medium-sized stars. And what's interesting is that this mass is basically packed in such a such a tiny uh, radius. So here is Earth for comparison. If I were to place Earth right here and decrease the speed dramatically, you would see that this basically creates an extremely small object next to Earth. So small as a matter of fact that it's about size of a large city. And as you can probably guess, if I release time, it's going to destroy Earth in like no time, like milliseconds. So th this is pretty much going to be the end of Earth because as Earth accelerates toward the Crab Pulsar, it's probably going to be spaghettified and will basically turn into nothingness. It's going to create a tremendously powerful nuclear reaction, possibly even a nova on the surface of Crab Pulsar. Now, interestingly, this actually does happen. Um, they do actually absorb uh, materials from partner stars and also um, partner planets, and they do have planets. As a matter of fact, we've had, we know of at least one pulsar that has several planets around it, and I've talked about it previously. You can check it out on the channel. And here's actually the destruction of our planet. It's slowly being shredded apart. And uh, these objects are so powerful and so dense and so strong that they can strip a star entirely of its matter 
turning a star into a planet. And so there are cases where actual um, stars were turned into planets because of pulsars and because of neutron stars, which is practically the same thing. All right, so that basically created a kind of a weird star instead of uh, a neutron star. And it's now called Earth Nova Remnant. Clearly a bug in the game. But basically, that's kind of what I wanted to show you. And I wanted to briefly talk about neutron stars and some of the more unusual things you may have not known about them. Uh, if I were to actually go ahead and shoot a neutron star through our solar system, you would probably see that it's actually going to create quite a lot of chaos here. So there is that pulsar that's going to pass through the solar system and it's going to basically even though it's so tiny, create quite a lot of orbital uh, abnormalities, including, of course, setting our sun on the wrong course. And so that's the idea of various neutron stars, pulsars, and magnetars, which are basically the same sort of species of stars. And that's kind of what they're all about. And in some of the future videos, we'll talk more about the more unusual details that we've discovered in the past um, few decades studying these objects. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you still haven't, and share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I've just destroyed our solar system, even though it seems that Earth is still orbiting around the sun. Very, very cool. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.